Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, now it's time for our hot topic, and it says federal government issues executive order on health workers leaving Nigeria. Um, that's the hot topic we're looking at, and we have a guest. Um, our guest today is Nick Aguli. He's a public affairs analyst, and we're just going to be having a conversation. Good morning, Mr. Nick. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning and good morning to our viewers. Okay, fantastic. So uh, there's an executive order issued by the federal government on health workers leaving Nigeria. Now we've seen the rise of um, people leaving in general, not just health workers, um, people in the tech industry, people in the banking industry, um, you know, people just leaving because they feel like the economy isn't the best at the moment. Um, our healthcare sector is not so great. Um, when you think of the security as well, so many things, so many factors, um, um, leads to their decision of leaving. Um, but one thing is for sure, we have a brain drain in the healthcare system because we don't have so many um, workers and the little that we have, they are all leaving to in search for greener pastures. So let's start with the root cause of the matter. Why are people leaving um, before we can now even go to, into the executive order that is being issued by the federal government? Why do you think um, people are really leaving Nigeria? It's, it's very clear. It's very clear why people are leaving Nigeria. Uh, and for the records, it's not only healthcare workers mm. that are leaving Nigeria. A lot of people are leaving Nigeria. Uh, when flights depart today, a significant number of people on those international flights departing Nigeria are going without the intention of returning. Mm. Uh, some of them have proper documents in their hands. Uh, they've got like immigration documents or they've got work permits and they are going legitimately to relocate to those countries. Some of them are carrying uh, the wrong papers. They have visitor visas. And uh, yet, with the visitor visas in their mind, they don't want to come back. They never intended that they were coming back. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, that increases uh, the difficulty of other people, other Nigerians, to secure visas to those countries. Because uh, perhaps unknown to the people who are engaging in this malpractice, uh, the, the, the countries abroad all have data. Uh, if they issue a visa, they know that this visa has been issued. And when you arrive in the country, they know that you have arrived. When you leave the country, they know you have left. And if you didn't leave the country, they also know you have not left the country. So as they see more and more people who carrying the Nigerian passport, arriving and not leaving, they, they, they make more difficult the grant of visas for other people, regardless of the reason that they want to visit. So it's not just healthcare workers. Um, the, the Nigerian situation uh, is becoming difficult. And, and it will surprise Nigerians to know that a, a, a chunk of those living, I will, I will even dare say that the majority of those living without the intention of coming back are those who are actually doing, uh, doing supposedly doing well in Nigeria. Uh, they have good good paying jobs and uh, they can fend for themselves you know they have their homes they have their cars they have good salaries and all of that but it's much more than that you know uh, for a lot of people it, there is something we call in nigeria that nigeria happens to you you know but perhaps you have seen uh, someone close to you kidnapped or perhaps even yourself kidnapped you know, your parents kidnap, you know, friends kidnap, you're thinking about it's possible that you could be the next kidnap victim. You know, you have your cars, you don't have the good roads to drive them on. You have your home, you come back home, there's no electricity. You know, you have to find a way to get electricity. You know, if it is the generator, of course, the diesel you were buying at a hundred and something, Naira is now a thousand five hundred. You know, and then you're talking about education for your children. Uh, the education for your children, you have to go abroad to get education for your children, uh, which means you are earning Naira to translate it into foreign currency to pay school fees. Same thing for healthcare. 
uh, and things like that. So all these things put together get to a point that Nigeria just decide that they have had enough, regardless of the jobs that they are doing, they have had enough and they want to go. And they sell off everything and just depart. So it, it, the, 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 the only way to solve this situation is to try and make Nigeria more livable than what it is now. That's just the only way that this thing can be resolved. So it's not just healthcare workers. If you take the statistics, uh, well, there are people in the IT sector, any of the hot selling skills, healthcare, IT, you know, um, uh, and then, you know, anything that has to do with uh, specialist skills, you find that Nigerians are living uh, because they are attracting better, better pay elsewhere. And I, and I, I can tell Nigeria something that will probably shock them if they are not aware. Uh, in the UK here, where I'm speaking from right now, they are also having a, a problem. A healthcare workers are relocating uh, from the UK to Australia. You know, so there is is a big problem for the for the UK. But luckily for the UK, as their healthcare workers are relocating to Australia, Nigeria healthcare workers are moving from Nigeria and are, and are coming in here. So um, uh, Jackpa is a syndrome that is probably global, but Nigeria's one is a bit uh, uh, too much now because on every young man's mind today in Nigeria, they want to leave. What is prompting this, you know, the government's decision? Because now the government is um, issuing uh, an executive order and people having that wants to leave Nigeria. So what is prompting this decision? Are they trying to stifle, um, you know, people not being able to leave when they want? Um, I want to understand why the government is doing this at the moment. Yeah, yeah, de definitely, obviously, uh, that's what the government has been doing. Uh, we were, we've had cases of the government taking the wrong approach with this uh, Jackpot syndrome, especially the one in the healthcare sector. There was a time that I think there was a bill in the Senate where they wanted to force doctors to serve Nigeria for a period of time. Yeah, about two, two to, to four years. Yeah, before they're able to leave. Uh, and then there, there is the recent one with the, 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 the nursing council uh, bringing in draconian, draconian uh, policies to try and uh, stop nurses from leaving. I mean, I call it draconian, for instance, a, a, a nursing council that actually certify the nurse as capable and competent to practice nursing in Nigeria is now demanding 100,000 Naira from that nurse to to, certif to to confine their certification. Does that make sense? This is the body that awarded the certification. So if a foreign body now writes to them and say, is this person uh, certified by your body? You are now looking for 100,000 naira from this nurse to, to be able to, to say, I awarded this certificate, you know. And then uh, they, they, they put a, the period to do it to be like one year or a year or two. The nurses came out protesting. I don't know where that matter is right now. Mm. And then uh, when I watched the, uh, the, 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 I don't know whether it's the director general or whoever is in charge of the nursing council come on TV. I really felt bad the way the man was talking, you know, because, you know, I, I don't think Nigerian leaders understand what leadership is all about. You are leading nurses. Your job is to ensure their welfare is okay. And you are sitting on TV and act arrogantly talking, uh, talking against them and making life difficult for them. I, 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 and, and then this, this one that has come now, which is, um, the executive order to say, well, you have to resign before you go. Mm. Okay, I, 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 to me, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, mm. uh, the government position is that a healthcare worker that wants to japa uh, decides that they will take leave of absence instead of resigning. 
and because it is leave of absence, they are still on the payroll, and the government is unable to replace them. Uh, so first and foremost, I don't even know if the government will be able to know uh, that those who took leave of absence are, are in Nigeria or are abroad. But if push comes to shove, for me, if a medical worker is faced with that uh, obstacle or hurdle, they can resign. Yeah, resign so that your position is declared vacant. And somebody else in Nigeria can take your job. But in, on the whole, the approach of the government to this issue is very wrong. Uh, there are two ways that government could have approached this issue. The first way is that you need to figure out why am I losing my healthcare workers mm. to other nations? What is it that these nations are offering my people that is taking them away from me? Because, you know, going abroad, a lot of people don't understand that going abroad is a major sacrifice. You are leaving your comfort zone, your homeland, your country, the place where your passport cannot be revoked. <coughs> uh, and you are going to this new place. Uh, you don't know where you're going to meet there. You, you know, it's going to be a new culture, new weather, for like Nigeria, new weather. Mm -hmm. Like we speak now, it's bitterly cold because of winter, you know, and then new people, new way of doing things and all of that. It's a big change for the people who are living. And, uh, you know, it's not as if the li life abroad itself is, is all rosy. It's not. The, the things abroad, uh, that you will find okay are the basic things of life which nigeria lacks things like security good roads electricity 24 7 water supply fine transportation system good health care education these are basic things and because we lack them in nigeria when people come abroad it's as if they've got they've gained something ordinarily we should all have these good things in nigeria as well once you take away those those things, those basic things that you will now come and find abroad, the rest of life abroad is hard. You earn your salary, you pay your bills. And there are people in this abroad who are unable to break even at the end of the month. You know, so it, it's tough. People are still on uh, food stamps or going to food banks uh, in the UK here, you know, to try and uh, fend for themselves because things are expensive. Uh, they too uh, have been suffering from inflation. So, for instance, if you come to the UK, you earn like two thousand pounds. You probably use half of that for your rent alone, and you are not yet talking about your other bills like water, electricity, gas, and then your feeding and all, all that, uh, all, all those kind of things. So, it's, it's a it's a big challenge, and the government should therefore be asking themselves that why will people leave their home, abandon their home, and go to this place? And the government will quickly find out that the reason people are living is those basic things we're talking about. Security, water, electricity, roads, education, healthcare. So why is the government of Nigeria year in, year out, budgeting budget out, not providing these basic things in Nigeria? Why are we still driving on death traps called roads? Why are there no railways? Say if I want to leave Abuja to Lagos, I can just do that uh, journey in two hours. Instead of doing it in a whole day now, mm -hmm. at the risk of kidnappers and all of that, you know, you want to go and fly, and I hear that flights are costing like 150,000, 200,000 one way. You know, there is no water in your this thing, you have deep borehole, there's no electricity, you have to look for electricity, education is nothing, healthcare. Nigeria government should sit back and say, why can't I provide these basic things for my citizens? And now look, if they provide these basic things for their citizens, you will discover that a lot of people are not going to leave Nigeria to go anywhere. Right. They will be in that country, enjoy those things. So that is one approach the government can take. The other approach, of course, is that <clears throat> there are still a lot of healthcare workers in Nigeria who are not in jobs. So instead of government lamenting and weeping like a, a small boy on this matter, Mm -hmm. As they are leaving, why not be recruiting uh, more nurses and doctors and pharmacists and all of that 
in Nigeria into 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 those jobs. Well, I have some them. statistics to that. Um, in 2021, it was being said that uh, there's a ratio of about um, four doctors to 10,000 patients. However, in 2023, there is one doctor to um, 8,000 patients instead of 600 patients in Nigeria. Um, and then it's been said that it would take about 20 years for us to be able to produce enough healthcare workers to cater um, for the population that we have. So even though you're saying that they need to recruit more people, what if they don't even have such resources? Because people who are studying right now are thinking of how to leave. So I, I, I think maybe there should be a deep dive into what can we do? So now the question is, what can the government do to ensure that people don't even have to leave? I was having a conversation with a guest um, some weeks ago, and he talked about the push and pull factor. We have a lot of push factors in Nigeria that is pushing people out. Um, and then all these other countries, they're quite attractive. So they're pulling you into their country because, you know, they have all the basic amenities that you need. So what are the things that you think the government can do in Nigeria to ensure that, you know, our push factors are not so much, just like how you saying in the uk for instance people are leaving migrating to australia right but they also have push factors but it's not as much so you still see a lot of people staying there and then for a country like ours a lot of people from here are wanting to move there so that is their own greener pastures so what can the government do to ensure that you know our push factors we're not just pushing people away well I, I, as i speak here i'm aware of nurses who are at our job looking for a job in Nigeria. I'm aware of doctors who are just doing like locum. They are just jumping from one clinic, one hospital to the other, just serving. They don't have a, a job head down. So what the government of Nigeria needs to do in the short term is create a portal, create like a portal, a central portal, uh, where every healthcare worker can go to and see available job opportunities, whether in government or in, in, in the private sector. So uh, private hospitals and clinics and all of that can go onto this portal and, and, and advertise the jobs that they have, you know, so that uh, it's easier for nurses and doctors and pharmacists and physiotherapists and all of those people in the healthcare sector to go to this one place and see available jobs and fill these jobs. So uh, there, there is definitely a gap, you know, between demand and supply, because um, uh, as we speak, there are doctors and healthcare professionals, other healthcare professionals who, who are out of job. If the, if, the, if the government has this portal, they could quickly go to the portal, see an available job, and within days, they have interviewed and they have filled the role. That way, we will be making maximum use of the available manpower in the healthcare sector in Nigeria at, at any point in time. That's not happening right now. So that is uh, one thing the government can do quickly. And of course, uh, every year we are producing doctors, our medical schools are producing doctors, pharmacists and nurses and all of that. And uh, it's time for government to, with that portal, as they are finishing, they are already on the portal, looking at the available job opportunities and filling them. If that happens, you will discover that there will be no healthcare professional who will be at home today saying I'm looking for a job. No, they will all be utilized. And I, and I, and I believe that is going to, to help to a very substantial uh, level the problem that we have now uh, between where jobs are and those who are seeking the jobs. Then the other thing, of course, is that government can support the training of more healthcare workers. You know, if you are training them and they are going abroad, you know, it's for our, it's for our benefit. Because at the end of the day, they will try to save some money and send it back home. And that is what we call uh, diaspora remittances. These diaspora remittances goes into the tens of billions of dollars every year. And it's very helpful to the Nigerian economy. Actually, if you train healthcare professionals and send them abroad, you are exporting. That's what we need. This economy needs export. So we're actually exporting manpower and we will get some dollars to come in into the billions of dollars is that no more helpful to us so the government can actually uh, see this an, uh, as an opportunity rather than as a problem mm. you know and once they see it as an opportunity they will begin to support the training of more healthcare professionals across the country <laughs> sorry okay. 
Okay, um, so I was going to ask, um, what what are the impacts, um, you know, of this new executive order? I mean, um, like we said, I, I think I would say that this is an HR situation, um, not even, you know, people just having to leave and say we don't want them to leave. Um, so when you look at it from the human resource um, aspect, you know that if you are leaving a place, you should resign, especially if you have no um, no idea of coming back or you don't have the, the decision to say, oh, yes, I'm going to come back here. Your decision is more, I'm leaving and I'm leaving for good. Um, but with this executive order being put in place now, and you know it's being issued, so it's almost like a law, sort of, um, what impact do you think this would have on our healthcare sector? I don't think it's going to discourage those who want to leave. Mm. It's not going to discourage them at all. I, I think the government of Nigeria needs to understand that uh, there are certain policies that they take they have to think through those policies carefully. Uh, I can give you an example. Like, they, they think that there's a lot of money in the economy, and people are using that money to buy dollars. And that is the reason why the exchange rate is crashing, and inflation is going up and all that. And then they decide that they will hack interest rates. You see why that hacking interest rate will not work? Because the man who has money, who now thinks that Naira is becoming valueless and valueless of no value or just ordinary paper? Who now wants to save his money in dollars? Even if you hack interest rate to 100%, he will not go and save the money as the government thinks. Because that man's singular objective is that he wants dollars. He wants his money in dollars so that he can keep it. Because dollar is the most stable currency. Nigeria, Nigeria Naira is not. The man who has a child abroad that wants dollars to go and pay school fees for his child, even if you hack interest rate to 200%, he's not going to go and put that dollars in the bank. He will not save it because he wants dollars to go and pay his child school fees. And that is why conse consecutively, these interest rate hikes have not done anything to the inflation that the government thinks. So that is where government gets it wrong. They just take a textbook policy and think it will, it will help the situation. And that is the exact thing that is going to happen in this uh, executive order. If you ask the, the, the nurses and the doctors and other healthcare professionals to resign, I can tell you, if the man gets a job in the UK or Canada or Australia or US, and you say, oh, I'm not giving you um, a leave of absence. Instead, you have to resign. He will resign. He will resign. So this is this is not going to solve anything. I want the government to know that this is not going to solve anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the government can decide on their own to say, well, uh, well we're changing the policy to say, when you take a leave of absence, uh, we're going to replace you. Mm -hmm. And when you come back, when you come back, we will see whether we have a vacancy for you or not. They can do that. That's fine. You know, they can say resign outright. But let me say that this is a valueless executive order. It's not what the paper that the president signed it on because it's not going to stop these healthcare professionals from going. It will never stop them from going. The only thing that can stop them from going is for the government to sit back and ask the fundamental question. What are the push factors that are pushing our people out, just like you said? And then what are the pull factors that are pulling our people to those other nations? And the government just have to work on those things. If they don't work on those things, they can't stop this syndrome. Where to advise the government on what they can do or certain policies that they can put in place? What would your advice be? Okay, so uh, what, what I would advise the government, uh, just like I said earlier, uh, the first thing they need to do is a short-term measure. You know, these days, it will just take a day. You know, IT whiskeys can create for them a job portal. You understand? Here in the UK, they have the, the kind of job portal. If you go on the government website. Yeah, national carers. There are jobs yeah. that are, exactly, there, there is a, a, a job portal where you can go. You know, that job portal is going to help the government bridge the gap between healthcare workers in Nigeria who are looking for jobs and then the available jobs. You understand? There yeah. could be a healthcare worker in, uh, say, Abuja now, who is out of job, looking for a job, not knowing that there's actually a job in Abekuta or in Lagos, you know, in Portacourt, where they can actually go take a good job and they are, they are able to uh, fend for themselves, get themselves accommodation and contribute to 
to, to the healthcare delivery in Nigeria. So once government builds that, that portal, all government jobs, including private sector jobs who want to subscribe to the portal, come and put their job there. So there is a nurse in Abuja. She just lost her job yesterday. But today she's on the portal and immediately finds a job and she moves into the job. So you now discover that the, 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 the gap between healthcare workers who are available to work but not uh, finding work and the jobs that are available looking for healthcare workers will be bridged immediately. So there will be ease of movement of healthcare workers across board. So that is the, the short term measure the government should take immediately. Then of course, in the medium and long term, the government has to say, why am I, why am I losing my healthcare workers? Why am I losing them? You know, and government has to start uh, dealing with those uh, matters. Uh, some, some part of it is not just the environmental conditions, but security and and good roads and and trains and and uh, and all those things. Part of it is, is 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 money, pure money. You know, in Nigeria, how much are people being paid, and how much can what they are being paid command in the market? You know, so you discover that people are actually in jobs, but they are poor. They are, they are po there's poverty in jobs. So government has to be dealing with all those things. But that is going to be on a medium and long term basis. So that that's to me will be the two uh two ways that I believe the government can begin to tackle this matter and not the shenanigans that they are engaging themselves in, including that sham of a policy by the nursing council. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope that um, they would put certain policies in place that would, you know, actually want people to even stay more and then train more people, like you say, because this would be a great avenue for the export. So I hope there are things that, you know, they're looking at that would um, tackle all of these things and just maybe make our economy better and people don't have to leave. But we want to say thank you for coming and having um, some valuable contributions on this topic. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, and uh, have a nice day to our viewers. You too. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking with Nick Agule. He's a public affairs analyst, and we've been talking about the executive order issued by the federal government on health workers and living in Nigeria. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic, so please stay with us.